welcome. I have an offer that you can't refuse. Experiencing one of cinema's most landmark portrayals of mafia family life, love, and loss, while nothing like a mafia don. If that's an offer that you cannot refuse, then stick around for this edition of the Thrift Store Rundown's Odyssey to the Oscars, where we bring the Academy Awards home on a budget in all shapes and sizes. First up, we have the annotated Godfather screenplay, with commentary on every scene, interviews, hundreds of behind-the-scenes photos, and little-known facts about the Godfather, like the war that went on, the power struggle between the Paramount Pictures executive and the director and co-writer Francis Ford Coppola that went on throughout the making of the film. That is among many little-known facts about the Godfather behind the scenes and also in front of the camera that you might not know about that Jenny M. Jones brings up. This is her book, which I purchased for $7.99 from the Red, White, and Blue Thrift Store in Patterson off of McLean Boulevard. It is a Black Dog and Leventhal publication. We'll get to the Tucci table a little bit later, but let's get into the Godfather. One of my assistant's favorite films, by the way, Jeff. He loves The Godfather. The entire trilogy, really, all three films. This only covers the first one. The one that won Francis Ford Coppola, his Academy Award for Screenplay, and of course, Albert S. Ruddy's Best Picture win. This retails for $29.95 US at $34.50 in Canada. This fully authorized, annotated, and illustrated edition of the complete screenplay of The Godfather presents all the little-known details and behind-the-scenes intrigue surrounding the landmark film. And here, you'll see fascinating commentary on technical details about the filming and shooting locations, about that scene outside the New York Supreme Courthouse that gathered 15,000 onlookers on a hot day, Tales from the set, including the arguments, the accidents, and the practical jokes, you know, in order to keep the cast and crew from going insane. Profiles of the actors and stories of how they were cast, deleted scenes that never made the final cut, goofs and gaps that did, and much more. Excerpts from interviews from nearly the entire cast and crew, including key figures such as Coppola, Albert S. Ruddy, and uh, many of the castmates, including Al Bettino are also featured in here. Contents include the genesis of The Godfather, how Paramount Pictures bought the rights to Mario Puzo's book, and a years-long battle it took for it to get from book to screen. Page 22, the complete annotated screenplay, with plenty of notes throughout, as well as additional commentary features and behind-the-scenes photos, so put together, marvelously structured, that you can visualize them all coming to life in motion as you're reading. That's how marvelously they are laid out throughout the screenplay section, behind the scenes and stills from the film itself. The aftermath, the initial press readings, the national release, and of course, his Oscar nominations. Three appendices. We have the credits, the timeline of events, from buying the book's rights, to pre-production, principal photography, post-production, release, and Oscar wins. You'll see that in Appendix 3, notable awards, a bibliography of other Godfather-related books, an index of notable quotes and lines, my personal favorite, and rather appropriate for this video, leave the gun, take the cannoli. The miscellaneous index and announcements concludes this book. Now, I have not seen The Godfather in my entire life. I mean, I've seen trailers, but never sat down to watch any of the first three films. And you might think that's kind of criminal on me, so much so that you want to put a contract down on my life. Just like the Corleones do, whoever wants them. Hear me out. This book is the best I'm going to do until the day I actually find and buy any Godfather DVDs. I'll settle for the soundtrack if I can find that. But do you see the behind the scenes photos and the stills from the film? How marvelously they're all laid out in black and white and color? As you're reading the screenplay, you can visualize them coming to life. That's how accurately and magnificently they're laid out and structured. Of course, you're getting plenty of behind-the-scenes notes throughout, 
casting, principal photography, the stunts, the makeup, the costumes. All that razzmatazz and so much more. It's like you're actually listening to the Godfather inside of your head. If you can read this book quietly, at peace, if you're alone, in isolation, and you have nothing else better to do, then take a trip back in time to, I assume, uh, the inner demonic seed of New York City, circa 1960s, 70s. This film was made in the 70s, as you might know. And experience family life a la the Corleones. I must also show you the credits because, well, they're really my favorite part of any film. The credits right here. Mostly complete. What more can you say? For those who haven't seen The Godfather, this is just about gonna do it for you. And we'll get you very excited to start seeing The Godfather and binging it over the course of several days again and again and again. These are the initial reviews for The Godfather from Kenneth Turan, Edward Guthman of the San Francisco Chronicle, and the famed God rest the soul Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. How a little-known indie film director named Francis Ford Coppola guarded the strength and courage and convictions while pissing a lot of people off, a lot of the suits at the top, to make his visit of Mario Puzo's book come to life is beyond anyone's comprehension, but you will learn about that in this book. So, for the annotated Godfather, I gotta give it... four and a half out of five claps. If I see the Godfather, and I, if I read along to the screenplay, well, I'll give it the extra half a clap. But for now, by itself, this is an introduction to the Godfather that nobody, and I mean nobody, can, will, and should refuse. But of course, what's a Godfather viewing party without some Italian food? Or, in the case of the Tucci table, British Italian American food. Because it's really a global hybrid that Stanley Tucci and his wife, Felicity Blunt, sister of Emily Blunt, who's married to John Krasinski, brings to the Tucci table. Which is a Dowry Books publication. With recipes that are simple to make and magnificently delicious, the Tucci table is a mouth-watering food porn manifesto. These are the meals I want every day to feed my libidinous, gluttonous, and sinful soul. Mario Batali. Sinful soul? Yeah, in the very least. Let's have a little peek at what's going on at the Tucci table.
pretty good stuff. By the way, you had to learn how to make the frittata and of course the timpano, two of the centerpieces of the Big Night Feast. You remember his movie, Big Night? No Oscar nominations, but for any foodie, it's serious uh, binge watching quality. Now, two of the most common Italian foods, especially if you're in the mob, are pasta and wine. And I figured, why don't we start with the wine first? A pair of teeps in small little munchies and treats like this. Um, forgive me. Spagliato Granata, which requires Prosecco, Campari, and Red Vermouth. Negronis are a favorite cocktail of Felicities. This light, bright Granata with the added lift of Prosecco is something we love to serve after a dinner party. Splagato or Splagatio means spoiled, denoting that it is a Negroni made with Prosecco instead, instead of gin. Poached pears and red wine! When I was a kid growing up in the 60s and 70s, this along with cherry jubilee seemed to be the height of sophistication. My mother often made the latter when she threw a dinner party so does the devilish restaurateur Pascal and Big Night, but this is a less volatile treat. Strawberries in Prosecco, which requires strawberries and very cold Prosecco, with a tablespoon of confectioner sugar, optional. Strawberries in Prosecco doesn't get much more simple or more sophisticated than that. This is not so much a recipe, but a delicious afterthought and a delightfully alcoholic end to a meal. If strawberries aren't at their best, use peaches or nectarines, or even a dash of raspberry puree sweetened with sugar. So now that we got the pair of teeps out of the way, let's cover the pasta. By the way, me showing you this Tuki Table book, this portion of the review was inspired by an article I read on StatenIslandLive.com, SILive.com, showcasing 13 foods that the Godfather would eat. Two among them? Pasta and wine. So let's go ahead to the pasta. Rice and grains, but mostly pasta. One summer, Stanley took me to Martha's Vineyard and introduced me to the joys of clamming. We went kayaking with the whole family in a well-loved cove. And then the real business of clamming began. I was so excited, but every time I thought I found a prized clam, it turned out to be a crab, which would firmly grab my thumb with its pincers. Everyone else filled bucket after bucket with the good stuff, which made for a delicious spaghetti vongole, which I devoured whilst tending to my wounds. This is that, the spaghetti vongole. If you're not into that, why not go simple with pasta with fresh cherry tomatoes and basil. Definitely a summertime treat. Tomatoes are at their peak when you know they grow in the summer months. It's called pasta alla checca, or checca in Italy. Nico's pasta with prosciutto, onions, peas, and pancetta. So named because Stanley Tucci's son, Nico, this is one of his favorite meals. Pasta with mushrooms. It can be used in a myriad of ways. As a side, set with polenta, and of course with pasta, the effervescent mushroom. This mushroom vangu, or pasta called fungi, as it is known in Italy, is a favorite of both Nico's and my dad's. Stanley's dad. You can change the notes of the sauce just by using veal stock as opposed to chicken stock. The classic bolognese, slow cooked to maintain that authentic Italian taste. And how about some orecchetti with broccoli rabe and anchovies? I love it, though I probably prefer the little less spicy than she does. And by she, he means his wife Felicity. And that reminds me, there are two ways to make any meal, and this is uh, to paraphrase Chef John of FoodVisits.com. The way your wife wants it done, and the one way. And take it from Stanley Tucci and his wife Felicity, I don't think his wife's way is the one way here. This is Rova da Raviolio. Ravioli filled with egg yolk. There will be no further um, <laughs> butcherings of any Italian pronunciations at this time. Unless they're in the title of the recipe, Trofietti with pesto genovese, string beans and potatoes, pasta al forno, baked pasta, also known as annellini al forno, gnocchi with sage butter, and basic risotto. Basic 
yet key to mastering any great risotto variations. One of the most simplest and delicious Italian grains and pasta pleasures. In addition to their recipes, they also got a couple of their famous friends to contribute recipes as well. Emily Blunt, Felicity's sister, and Tony Saloub, who is also co-star of Big Night. And of course, star of Monk on USA Network. Does anyone remember Monk? I do. I especially remember it for Randy Newman's Steam song, even though I have never seen an episode of Monk ever. Oh well. I would so love to explore that jungle one day. In pasta and grains, soups and salads, appetizers, entrees and desserts, meat and vegetables, light, refreshing, globe-trotting, delicious, familial, warm, inviting, comforting, bold, spicy, spring-like, summer-like, very seasonal, and a bunch of other adjectives that I may not have in my vernacular. Filled to the brim with photographs and lots of familial anecdotes from both Blunt and Tucci. I have to say, I have a very firm stance on celebrity cookbooks. If they're not that great sounding inside and outside, and not that great looking, well, what is there left to lose? Buy it, but don't really give a high score to it. But you know what? This is just so wonderful. I gotta give this a high score. Oh, before I do so, let me say in the back. Well, nothing to read on the back except the hands of a man at work creating lasting family memories around the table. Four and a half out of five claps will do for the two key table. For a total of nine out of ten. I don't know if I still got the spot to say this or if I could say it accurately, but here it goes. With a nod to the queen of Italian-American cookery on public television, and you probably know who she is, the woman I'm, I'm about to reference. Here we go. Tukia tavola on mangiare. All to the table to eat, and continue to enjoy one of life's simple yet great pleasures, and of course, one of cinema's most historic and so incredibly awesome pleasures. Thanks for watching, or should I say Graxi? Tomorrow's another awesome day, so long as I catch you on the flip side. Until then, stay golden.